All right, you know, here we are, Style Play Fights. We're here with Edward Vasquez, or Eddie? Yeah, Eddie the Kid. Eddie the Kid Vasquez. 15-1, and one, ranked number 10 in the world in the IBF. I mean, he's going to be fighting for the world title, the featherweight, super featherweight world title, November the 4th in Monte Carlo, Monaco. You know, we're happy to have you here, and, you know, we just started this project project because what I was telling you about how we're trying to put more emphasis on boxing and and the local talent that are getting ready to cross over and guys like you that are that are already there at this you know making your your challenge out we're excited for you we're happy you know because like i was telling you boxing to me i feel is a stepchild sport yeah unlike the other sports we don't have a safety net you know it's kind of like you have to be all in absolutely and what i mean by that safety net you know we don't have academic programs for this to where if it doesn't work out, oh, hey, well, maybe I'll be an accountant. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll be, you know, a teacher. Or, and nothing wrong with that. But, you know, they don't have that for us, you know, academically. You know, that now now the athletes are even getting paid with that NIL. Yeah. So, so for you to be here and, and get past, you know, bypass all that, you know, take the risk, you know, all your eggs in one basket. We're, we're excited to have you, and thanks for, for being on Absolutely, the show. Absolutely, man. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. So tell us a little about yourself. Yeah, so I've been fighting. Well, I've been training and fighting since the age of seven. Um, I had 90 amateur fights. I was 82 and 8. I, you know, I've just pretty much traveled the country fighting since a kid. You know, back when I was younger, boxing, I guess, at least here in Texas, was a little bit different. We used to fight almost every weekend. Um, I don't know why that slowed down, but yeah, so I come from South side of Fort Worth. I started off at, um, round one boxing club. And then, um, from there I went over to Reyes boxing club. And then from Reyes boxing club, I went over to FASG and that's where I fight out of now. But yeah, you know, it's, I've been a pro for about seven years now. It's been, uh, you know, a slow journey, but you know, it's, it's gotten me here and I, you know, I, I appreciate the, you know, the highs and lows. Absolutely. Um, I'm I'm promoted by Lou DeBella. I just was signed to him probably about I'd say maybe four months ago. And um yeah, like you mentioned, I'm I'm ranked number ten in the world in the IBF and I'm uh, fifteen and one. Uh tell us about your team then. So you're signed with Lou DeBella. Yeah, I'm signed with Lou DeBella. I'm managed by DKO Boxing. They're out of uh New Jersey and I'm I'm trained uh, by Ray Barrera out of uh, FSG boxing. Without giving too much, I mean, how's your camp been? Oh, it's man, it's been you know like, I guess any uh, all, any, all fighters say it's been the best camp, but this has literally been my you know my best camp I've, uh, you know, and I I've I've done a few interviews and I've said I, this has been my best camp because I feel like this is the most um, mature I've been in terms of just you know in the boxing business and um, I've had a lot of resources like I haven't had to do everything myself like I've done in the past to where like I you know, I'm I'm looking for sponsors or I'm looking for I'm I'm doing my own di- you know dieting or coming up with my own game plans things like that. Um, you know, this time I was able to delegate a little bit more in my my management is you know taking care of things on the back end for me where I don't have to worry so much. Um, my promoter of course has my back. Um, you know, I brought on some really good dietitians to where I don't have to worry about making weight anymore. And you know, pretty much the only thing I have to worry about is is just is just fighting. And um, right now, I'm you know I'm super comfortable and and um, and I don't mean that like I'm you know I'm not getting out of my comfort zone. I mean like I'm I'm able to just worry about boxing only, and uh, I'm just fully locked in, and, you know, ready to go. So this fight is for the IBF Super Featherweight World Title. You're the first guy since really since me. To you know, to have a have a shot at that. Tell us a little bit about what what you're thinking. Yeah, now now we're we're fast forwarding it to now. Man, it's awesome, man. You know, and and uh, I I give a lot of credit to you, you know, for for being a pioneer to that and a trailblazer because I always tell people that like when I was four years old, like you were like one of the first fighters that kind of let that spark in me, being young and letting me know that like hey, like it's not just. Um, it is just a dream, but it is also attainable being where we're from here in Fort Worth because you don't see a lot of fighters, you know, that, that even make it to this level from being from around here. And it's not that there's not talent. It's just, um, I don't know. I feel like sometimes people just don't see it all the way through. But, um, you know, seeing your success 
it, it kind of always motivated me to let me know that it is it is possible and um you know it's just cool you know coming from where we come from and um it, it means the world you know now i have a baby girl and i have my baby girl and having this dream since like i said since I was like four or five years old she's about to be four years old it's just yeah it's just awesome you know um it's it's just, it's just a real moment and um I just feel like this is my time and, you know, I, I'm just super blessed to be here. How's your wife feeling about all this? Oh, she's so excited. You know, we've been together for, on the 16th, it'll be 13 years. So, Ooh. you know, I, I, and, you know, recently we talked about when we first met, I told her that I'm a fighter and that one day I'd be a world champion. And, you know, that one day we'd be here. She, you know, and I was like, D did you believe me at the time? She was like, no, I thought you were just saying that. And uh, she said for the longest time, like for like maybe four or five years, she thought it was just something I did, you know, <laughs> like just, you know, kind of like extracurricular activity. And uh, finally, you know, I, like I told her, you know, it's it's a long process and it doesn't always, you don't always see the benefits, but um, she's excited now. You know, it's uh, everything I've put her through, yeah. everything she's been through with me in terms of, you know, in the boxing business. And now... Um, you know, we're not fully there yet, but you know, we're well, we're well on the way. Either way, if it was a pickup line, it worked, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and she will be heading out there also. Yes, with you, yeah, right? she'll be out there. Um, I think she's gonna go like two days before. Okay. Yeah, two oh, days before, okay. and then um, actually, I think from from Monaco, we plan on going out to Switzerland for a little bit after the fight. Yeah, just to kind of nice. Yeah, because you know, I've been gone. You know, for training camp. Yeah. I think to in total, I'll be gone for like a whole month. And so I just think, you know, to I owe it to her. You know, she's sure. been at home taking care of my daughter, making Holding sure. Holding it down for you. Yeah, and making sure everything is taken care of to where I can just solely focus on boxing. And so, you know, it's we need that little downtime, you know, after the Absolutely. fight. Absolutely. That's exciting. So I'm looking forward to that also. Those kind of women are, are hard to find, you know, that – that trust you and let you just focus only on your sport. Yeah, yeah man. Because, yeah, Letty, Letty as well. I mean, she held it down many a years. Yeah, and that's well, – I'm thankful for that, man, because, you know, that's a lot of times in, in, in boxing, that's a fighter's downfall is is, is their, mm -hmm. their woman or just woman in general. Yeah, they're personal. Yeah, and um, – and for me, yeah, that's, you know, that's why I keep my girl because I'm like, man, it's hard to come by someone like that. And she's seen me since the amateur days, you know. I think she probably met me when I had probably about 60, 65 amateur fights. And so, you know, she saw me go, you know, all the way up to 90 fights as an amateur and then, you know, turn pro. And here we are now, 16 fights in. Oh. Yeah, so she's been part of the journey for a long time. She's part of that journey, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And y'all have a baby girl now. Yeah. What's her name? Her name is Sailor. Sa Sailor. Aww. Yeah. Sailor. And she's, she loves boxing, but I try to keep her away from, you know, all the, like the weight cut and I don't let her come, um, I don't let her come to any of my fights. Not yet, at least. No, I just, yeah. I don't want her to, it's a lot of like crazy energy, you know, at, <laughs> at, at boxing, you know, at boxing events. And uh, I, I just don't like, you know, I don't want to bring her around any of that. So yeah, I get right that. now she loves it. She doesn't like me being away. Like when I came back from Vegas, and I, it was time, I had to go to the gym the next day, and she's like, "No, don't go!" And she cried, and she, I guess because she thought I was going to leave again for weeks at a time. But I always tell her, "Like, I'll be right back." And I'm just going to go right she up the daddy's road. Girl. Oh my god, yeah. And so you know, I just like I always tell my girl, I don't want her to ever like not like boxing or grew up to hate boxing because yeah. her daddy wasn't around, you know. So. um also, after this fight, you know, we plan on taking her on vacation and, you know, spending some much needed time with her because, you know, like, yeah. just like my girl, she's holding it down yeah. also, you know, yeah. she's, she's understanding for daddy. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So I have to bring up your last fight in July. Mm -hmm. You came in heavy, you missed weight. Mm -hmm. And I, on your social media, I uh, read you, these, these are your words. It says, uh, you wrote, well, damn, I took a major L versus the scale this morning. I take full accountability and I do understand that missing weight is very unprofessional and unfair to my opponent who worked his ass off to hold up his end of the deal. Absolutely. So I just wanted to know what you're doing differently for this fight to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Yeah, so first off, I'm, I'm, I had more time to get ready. Um, like usually I don't, 
I don't like to take fights that are under six week notice just because I don't like to compromise my health. And it's kind of like my principle. Like if I'm going to do something, I like to do it right. So is it on the last fight you had like, was I had four, short? like about four week oh, notice. Okay. okay. And I so for about four or five week notice. Yeah. And, you know, I guess you could say like, I, I should have known that I had a fight coming up soon, but I don't like to start the whole process until I know that this is for sure going to happen until I see a contract, you know? So, um, so first off, I'm, you know, I had more time for this. I had about eight or nine weeks. And, um, of course, I'm going up to 130 pounds. So um, those are just a few things I'm doing differently. Also, I'm, you know, I brought in some, some of the best dietitians in the world. And so I'm not, on the last fight, I kind of just did it on my own based off of previous knowledge that I had from previous nutritionists. So this fight, um, you know, it's it's out of my hands and I'm just following a plan. And I think that's what I'm I'm best at. I'm, I consider myself a pretty good student. Like if someone tells me to do something or study something, I follow the instructions to the T. And so, um, yeah, you know, I'm not having to worry about that at all. I'm just following the instructions every day. You know, every day I wake up, I eat exactly what I'm supposed yeah. to on every single meal. And um, my water intake is to the exact T. You know, I don't stray away from it at all. And I you know, like I said, I, I just try to be the best student I can. So that's definitely what I'm doing differently good, this good. time. Well, that's good to hear. Absolutely. <laughs> I had to ask that. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you. Okay, Joe Cordina. Yeah. What do you know about this champion? Um, he's you know, he's a good fighter. He's well versed. Um, he comes in with a big amateur pedigree. He comes out of um the the British um Olympic team. And so, you know, he I think he might have been I think he's a two time world champion. Um, coming straight out of the Olympics, he's seventeen fights in, I believe. Um, he he's a good fighter, man, and you know, and I respect you know all all the um, all the wins he has, all his attributes, and um, that's why I'm training, you know, to be my absolute best. And that's you know, like I always say, I train with absolute respect. And when I what I mean by that is I I try to cover all corners. You know, I don't try to take any corners or or think, um, oh, he won't be able to do this or he won't be as good as this guy or that guy because, you know, I, I respect everything he's done and that's why, I'm gonna, you know, you're going to see the best kid yet, you know, because of, of what he's accomplished. So, you know, like he, he's a boxer and um, I've seen him in his last fight. He was able to stand there and brawl. Um, but I do know that almost every opponent that has been in front of him it's kind of been tailor made for him because, you know, he came straight out of the Olympic team, signed to matchroom boxing, and they've kind of put guys in front of him that were tailor made for him, you know, that kind of were there to lose, you know, and um and I guess they could say the same thing about me, but I'm if you know who I am, I'm I'm not coming to lose or to lay down or even just to cower down, you know. Um I'm I'm doing everything in you know, in in my power to, you know, secure the win. Give us three words that motivate you. Three words. Wow. Three words. That you motivate say, you every day to get out of bed and do what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I guess you could say my daughter's name first, you know, um, sailor, family, and God. You know, that's, those are my three mo motivators, three you know. Good ones. Yeah. And, you know, and I don't, I'm a big guy on, I don't really need motivation. It's more so about discipline for me. Like, um, this is this is what I this is what I chose to do as a career and this is what I've done my entire life. And I know that motivation always goes you know, comes and goes. And if I only trained hard or showed up whenever motivation was there, I probably wouldn't be there every day. But I know that in this sport discipline is much more important. Mm -hmm. So um I guess discipline could be another one of those words, you know, that's motivating for me is um no matter what's going on in life. I have to make it happen and I, I have to put in the work and, yeah. um, you know, I'll give credit to that, you know, to where I've gotten today. That's awesome. Well, this is the first time since, this is my question to Polly now, since Polly, uh, he actually, his first world title shot, he had to leave the country too and go to his territory and fight their world champion in, in Tokyo. Um, and looking back, I'm think I wish we had, someone that we could just ask for advice, a, a former champion, you know? Absolutely. And we, we really didn't. We, we kind of just, we learned as we went yeah, <laughs> in yeah. everything. But this question is for Polly to give, what advice would you give 
Eddie Vasquez here, who's just weeks away from going, leaving this country to go fight the champion for the world title. What advice would you give him? It seems like you're doing everything you need to. So, yeah, just don't leave any stone unturned. You know, try not to leave it to the judges. But, you know, I mean, and when you're starting that fight, you need to fight like you're already two rounds behind. Mm. I think I think that's kind of that's you know the the urgency you need to you need to fight with yes, sir. you know and I ain't saying to go go try to do the knockout but I'm just saying you know to to put you know to put the pressure and and take take that title away um, because whenever yeah I, my first world title shot uh, it wasn't as you know successful as I wanted it to be but uh, I learned a lot and uh, I knew I, I was never gonna let that happen again. That's solid advice, man. I appreciate that. Going in and being two rounds behind. That's yes. or at yes. least thinking that way. That's, that's really yeah, good you're... advice, actually. I appreciate that. What man. is the one thing that you want people to know and remember who Edward Vasquez is? I, I want people to know that I'm I'm just like everybody else. Um, I come from south side of Fort Worth where we don't always have the most resources or the most inspiration. Mm -hmm. And um, this, you know, it, whether it be boxing or whatever it is you do, you know, making it to the top is definitely possible for anybody, um, no matter what you come from or your circumstances or, you know, how you were raised. It's, it's possible for anybody through, you know, hard work and dedication and uh, being consistent, showing up every day and, um, and you know, just kind of being an open book and... Um, always you know studying and taking in knowledge from from other people mm -hmm. as long as you do those things um you know you, the the there's no limits to what you can accomplish you know and um yeah i just want people to know that it's possible for anybody you know just make sure you you do the work and um you show up every single day that's that's you know my, one of my biggest messages that i've been pushing for for a long time now you know that i'm I always say I'm probably not the most talented fighter. I don't even know if I was born to be a fighter, but I'm here because I show up every single day and I absolutely refuse to be outworked. Like I'm always going to be the hardest working person in the room. And I, that's really the only talent I have is being disciplined and outworking every single person in the room every single time. So I just want much. you to know, Polly and I were super excited to see this happen. Thank like you. I said, it's been since. He won the world title. Yeah, that's he crazy. He retired in 2004 that Fort Worth has seen a world champion. Yeah, and it's crazy, you know, that, that he goes full circle. I it have, really does. I have, like, literally, like, vivid memories in my head of going to see Pauly train when I was, like, you know, four or five years old. And I think I still have the glove that you signed for me when I was, yeah, like, <laughs> I was just a kid. Wow. And, um, you know, it's just crazy how that goes full circle, you it know, is, and... Uh, yeah. I appreciate the opportunity, you know, you guys have me here. And also, Thanks for coming. Uh, you know, Polly for being a trailblazer, man. I really appreciate you, you know, for, for lighting that spark in me as a kid and mm. letting me know it's possible. That's great. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on Styles Make Fights. I'm, I'm glad we got to, you know, you got to speak about your personal side and, you know, yeah. how, you're, how you how you got into it. But that we all fight. We all have a fight. You know, we all fight for something, you know. And I know Absolutely. there's people that aren't. In the ring, but you know they're all fighting too, just to yeah. get ahead. And, but to see the personal side, and for the risk that you're taking, you know, and how you're going to represent our, you know, our city, Fort Worth, right here. Oh, yeah. uh, we're, you know, hopefully uh, everyone tunes in, and and we will surely, surely t tune in, and uh, we're going to be supporting. You know, I have a thing. question though. How do we watch this? Like how? It'll be are on. We gonna uh, be able to watch this? Yeah, it'll be on the zone. So, yeah, it'll be on the zone. Uh, we'll be in the main event on the zone. I'm not sure if it'll be. Um, um, it's they're seven hours behind or no, you know, seven hours ahead. Oh, okay. And so, um, I think here maybe it might be around three or four p.m. Okay. Yeah, but it'll be on the zone, um, November fourth. Well, yeah, we'll we'll be the main event. So you know, just tune in. Okay. November fourth on the zone. Yep. And how do people follow you on social media? Um, you can find me on on uh, Instagram at Eddie Vasquez TX. Or you could find me on um, Facebook at, you know, Edward Vasquez. And that's pretty much just really the only social media I use. Yeah, thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. Thanks I appreciate it. Down. Thanks, thank Edward. You. Thank you, man. Good luck to you, bud. Thank you, brother.